What is up guys, it's your boy Swalam here, back with another World of Warcraft video for The War Within, and today we're talking about setting up the best concentration build for gold making in The War Within based on using concentration for profit. Now, when I say the best concentration build, that is always going to be subjective, and I'm just going to say I, I base this on three criteria, where number one is the actual profit you're making, because when you're spending concentration and in gold making, you do care about profit. So criteria number one will be profit. Criteria number two is how cheap this is to set up because that makes it more viable to more people, not having to spend tens of thousands of gold, 50,000 gold or 100,000 gold to set up this recipe or the, like the professions and you don't have to buy any super expensive recipes either. So it's very easily accessible to a lot of people and you can basically start printing gold from the start. Now number three, criteria number three, is how easy it is as well. This is something you can do in like about an hour or even less sometimes and it's super easy, pretty much anyone can do this and due to the prices of, I'm just going to reveal right now it has to do with enchanting and the prices of dust and even shards and everything else in enchanting has gone down quite a bit so anyone can skill up enchanting super cheap right now and enchanting also has catch up mechanics for knowledge points that gives you a lot of knowledge points super easily and super fast. Now in addition to that due to the knowledge point you do get really early, you can just get this done and you don't even have to do your weeklies. Even though weeklies will allow you to min max profits a little bit more, you don't technically have to do them. That means that you can set this up in one day and then simply log on, spend concentration and harvest the gold. That is all you have to do. You will pretty much be profitable on day one. Now before we dive into this video, I do want to say that if you want to have early access to my gold making videos, then check out my gold making guide for the War Within through the link down below in the pinned comment, where first of all, when you buy this, you get the guide itself, which is over 100 pages talking about farming for gold, both solo farms and group farms. We also talk about spending knowledge points and concentration and how to build the perfect profession builds to make gold in pretty much every single profession, and it's just talking about a bunch of ways to make gold in the War Within. In addition to that, when you buy the guide, I aim to give you guys Patreon level service from a one-time payment. So first of all, you get updates sent to you for free. Even if you just you buy the guide as a one-time payment, you get updates sent to you for free. You also get access to a private gold making Discord community where I give you guys early access to videos, sometimes exclusive videos as well, and I post about things in that Discord server that I don't talk about on YouTube. It is just a a good place to be to get more um, secluded or like locked information, B more information for gold making. And if you ever have any questions about gold making as well, that is a great place to be to get those uh, questions answered as well. So yeah, you get access to a gold making Discord community with a bunch of like-minded people that just want to make gold in the war within. That Discord server is also where I give you guys early access to videos, for example. So it's important to join that server for that aspect alone. Now. Getting early access to videos means that you can start farming those gold farms or even set up a concentration build like this before it becomes public knowledge. Now the link to that guide will be down below so feel free to check it out and if you do buy the guide thank you so much for the support, it really means a lot. Now with that being said let's take a look at how to set up a concentration character to make a bunch of gold. Now I already revealed that it has to do with enchanting but we are setting up both enchanting and the jewel crafting here and I'll be setting this up from scratch with you guys in this video. Now I'm not going to show you everything about the setup because that would be a one hour plus video but I'll be showing you the highlights and talking about everything you want to do. So first of all number one is obviously pick up enchanting and jewel crafting. Apart from that I usually like by starting and by just skilling up my professions. So in this case we have enchanting, I have bought some fishing caps for about 150 gold each so we're going to disenchant those right now because in enchanting you get skill points for disenchanting so we're just going to get those skill points and level up enchanting a little bit and get some materials at the same time. So there we go. 
Now, once you have disenchanted, however many items you have, it doesn't really matter how many you do, but I like to get to about 15 skill points from disenchanting, you will keep skilling up enchanting by simply crafting everything once. So buy some volumes and focus on crafting everything you have access to at least once, and you can also just buy a regular bismuth rod so you actually have an enchanting rod here while you're doing stuff. So here we go, gonna craft this one just once here as well. So crafting this one once for the first time craft bonus, and that is only really for the knowledge points. You don't really get anything else, but I mean, you're skilling up anyway, so you might as well. So focus on crafting, once again, everything once. And as you can see, we for example have 3 skill points available from Ruined Bismuth Rod, so we want to take advantage of that while we can, before that goes down to only 1 uh, skill point instead of 3. So there we go, you can also use the filter here by the way to get first craft bonus, just so you are sure that you're always crafting for that bonus as well. And we want to get to 25 skill points, that is usually my first... Um now, that's usually the first thing I want to do is get to 25 skill points, and we're probably going to continue after that as well. But 25 skill points is mainly to unlock a spec, just so you know what build you're going for. So here we're going to craft this one, we have a couple of mirror powders as well, and some Algeri mana oil. And I will just make one of these because I can, this one you can skip. But the thing is, it's not really that expensive anymore. 50 storm dust is about, this is nothing, this is super cheap to make, even this one, and it gives me two skill points so we're gonna craft that one as well and then we have one Algeri mana oil and then we have 25 skill points now in enchanting it's pretty important that the first thing you pick is going to be ephemerals, enrichments and equipment. I don't care if you're going for enchantments, like if that's your build, that's fine, but in enchanting you really want to spec into this first, and the reason for that is that by spending 5 points here, and then 15 points here, you will unlock a lot more recipes than you otherwise would. Like, just unlocking this and then crafting everything you get access to will give you so many knowledge points. Like, right now we get 5 recipes that we can make, and I'm just going to craft all of them to get those knowledge points, and we reinvest those back to get even more recipes as well. Basically, you spend 20 knowledge points in total, and I think you get 22 back, so you literally get free knowledge points. But not only that, as you can see we actually get acuity from these on these ones as well because they are not basically they're not taught to you by the trainer they're taught to you by spending knowledge points which means that when doing these as a first time craft you actually get acuity back so picking this you get a free 110 acuity while you're skilling up anyway, like at the moment we're skilling up enchanting and we're getting acuity at the same time and we're getting knowledge points at the same time as well. So we're going to reinvest those knowledge points into here and we get 5 more recipes this time, or I guess 6 more recipes, not 5 but 6, so we're going to craft those as well. And you will repeat this process until you have made all of the gleeful glamour recipes that you get access to from that skill tree. And as you can see we also skill up enchanting at the same time, so we have 34 enchanting right now, and we'll probably end up at about 45, give or take, skills in enchanting after doing everything. Now I could pause the video right here, but I kind of just want to show you guys crafting all of these glamour recipes, and how much acuity you actually get from it, and the experience you get, and the knowledge points as well, and just so you don't get confused at any point when I'm crafting here. So going to enchanting, we have specialization points, we once again reinvest everything, and I usually stop at 15 points out of 20, because the last one doesn't teach you anything. It gives you more skill points, which might actually be important by the way when it comes to crafting crafting orders, because most of your crafting orders will be gleeful glamour, so unless you want to always spend the quality 2 dust, you might want to have those last 5 for skill points, but it's not really that important. So for me, I usually go 5 and then 15, and then we start working on our build. Now at this point we still have a lot of crafts that we can do, so first time craft bonuses, we have all of these we have to go through, and we're just gonna do that as well. So after crafting all of these uh, gleeful glamours, we didn't end up on 45 out of 100 skills in enchanting, 
and we also got 460 acuity, we got 350 from the bag, the one time bag that anyone can pick up, located right here if you haven't gotten it yet, I think it's inside this house, so right here at your crafting orders weekly quest you can get a one time bag for 350 acuity, so basically we got 110 extra acuity from these gleeful glamour recipes, and we ended up on 45 skills in enchanting, at this point we have unlocked our weekly quest which we're going to do right now for some more skill points and we're going to learn some more recipes and craft all of those for the first time craft the bonus as well at this point our next goal is to get enchanting to 50 and we kind of want to get it closer to 60 because now we need to unlock two more trees and the two trees we care about here is everlasting enchantment and supplementary shattering everlasting enchantment is to get the build you're going for and then supplementary shattering gives you more ingenuity and resourcefulness while crafting. So once again, while you're skilling up, focus on first craft bonuses, so craft everything once, and that's pretty much all you have to care about. Once you are out of first time craft bonuses, you can buy some cheap recipes on the auction house, or you can just craft whatever you can that gives you the most skill points based on what you currently have available. Now, once you get to 50 skill points, you can unlock your second talent tree, which is going to be Everlasting Enchantments, where you're going to spend 20 knowledge points in here. So we're just going to smack that in right now, because we need those points anyway. So there we go. And you can see in the next tree requires level 60 of enchanting. So you want to get your enchanting to level 60. In my case, I'm just going to spam the Armored Leech Enchant, which currently gives me one skill point every single time, until we get to 60 skill skill points. That's kind of the magic number right here, so here we go, 60 skill points, and we can now pick Supplementary Shattering. Now in Supplementary Shattering, you will go here after you have finished Everlasting Enchantment to increase your profit margins. As you can see on the left side, we get more resourcefulness, and we get more materials back when proccing resourcefulness as well, and down in the middle we get Immaculate Ingenuity, giving you more ingenuity and spending less concentration on enchanting craft. In the main tree you also get all stats, so basically both resourcefulness, multicraft and ingenuity from this main one. So in this talent tree, or in, in here basically in supplementary shattering, you can spend up to 90 knowledge points to increase your profit margins on the enchants that you are doing. So at this point you have skilled up enchanting to the skill point you want to be at which is 60 skill points and it's now time to hunt down the knowledge points that you currently don't have. You need to get a lot more knowledge points than this. So first of all we're going to go for a grab of the one time treasures which if you have um, if you have certain add-ons they will show you on the map where they are. For example handy notes you can go to handy notes left click and then go to profession treasures and make those be shown on the map. So over here we can see exactly where those are on the map for me for example. We have the silver Dornogal rod right here and there's going to be two of them in every single zone for a total of eight treasures per profession giving you 24 knowledge points because they all give you three. So this one for example is three times eight 24 knowledge points and for this you just have to fly around if you know where they are it takes you about 10 minutes and if you don't know where they are maybe it takes you 15 minutes. Either way it's super fast and I have individual videos showing you the location of all of these treasures. Either way, they're profession treasures, and you can find them through the use of add-ons like, for example, TomTom and Handy Notes. Now, while you are grabbing your profession treasure items in Oshkahet, also go buy the City of Threads, which is where you find your last two items anyway, and buy the knowledge point books for cash. Now, this is a currency you might not have, and if you, like me, don't currently have this currency, go find a single treasure in Ashkahet somewhere and that will give you cash and once you have gotten that you can then transfer cash from your main to your alt if you have any leftovers alternatively I have a video about how to get cash as well where we get enough to buy both of these books so we get one per profession for 10 knowledge points and they will cost you about 1130 and you get 1150 from doing that route in about 25 minutes so if you want to be self sufficient here you can farm this out in about 25 minutes but if you have leftover from your main then just transfer from your main 
to your alt using the warband. Now the thing is, in order to activate the catch-up mechanic for enchanting, you have to get your two items from treasures anyway, which is like, you, you get two items per week from treasures, and that treasure can be, for example, dirt piles, and a very good place to farm these dirt piles is down here in Oshkohet, where at the same time you're farming cash, while also farming those treasures. So for me, I'm going to take about 10 minutes or 15 minutes of farming down here right now, to try to get those treasure point items to weekly treasures to get two knowledge points but also to activate the catch-up mechanic this is super important by the way you will want to do this as soon as possible once again to activate the catch-up mechanic that we're going to be talking about in a couple of minutes in this video so after farming for those treasure points, which we um, ended up getting both the weekly, yeah, might be the angle to buy powder. some gold eventually, or buy gold really, buy gear. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Blizzard, <laughs> don't, don't ban me, bro. What's up, man? Don't, don't ban me, man. That, dude. Oh, we got him. <laughs> In the got middle him, of the recording, man. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, so after getting our weekly treasures from dirt piles, we ended up getting both the powdered fulgurins for enchanting, and we also got the crystalline, uh, what is this called? Crystalline repository? You want to get both of these, by the way. They are the main ones you really want to get. I also got the two for jewel crafting, which is maybe not as important, but we ended up getting 229 cash. Now, I need more than that, so we're going to transfer from my main to my alt, and we have quite a few leftovers, so here we go, transferring that right now. And that should be enough to buy both books, and these books, once again, gives you 10 knowledge points, so you really want to get these. Once again, if you don't have the cash on your main, you can just go for the cash farm route that I have where you do three quests that I have a separate video about but just to give you a kind of heads up the first quest is over here and the, th the second quest is over here and then you have a third quest down here and you have a fourth quest over here kind of like give or take so there's four quests that you want to do and doing those four quests gives you enough cash to buy all of these books well both of these books now the enchanting book is going to be inside here so kind of like inside here is where the enchanting book is going to be so you talk to this guy and you buy the web sparkles pretty and powerful like now, one last thing is that if you have um, enough reputation, you can also buy 10 more knowledge points from certain vendors here. So you have, for example, enchanting from the, um, what are they called again? Council of Dornogon. So you want to have 12 renown levels to get these, and then you can buy that as well. So this one will cost you 50 acuity, but you get that acuity back when, when learning. So these are technically free, you want to get those as well. And if you don't have that reputation yet, well, we have an upcoming anniversary event that gives us a massive reputation boost. So now's a good time to get those reputations or the renown levels, but I do think most people will have a renown level 12 and buy now, especially with the Council of Dornogon which is probably going to be the most important one here. So enchanting is Council of Dornigal, and then the uh, Hallow Fall of Rothi you need to have 14 with, and that gives you jewel crafting. So now we have finished grabbing all of the treasures for enchanting and we're going to learn all of the items here for knowledge points and see exactly how many we end up with, but it should be about 45 or more, so we'll have to wait and see, like 45, 46, 47, something like that. Either way, I'm just gonna learn everything here from these items. We're also picking up jewel crafting items at the same time, by the way, so I'm not gonna show you too much about setting up jewel crafting, but I'll be telling you which route to go for. But jewel crafting is much easier to set up than enchanting, but also gives you way less profits than enchanting. Enchanting is kind of the big ticket profession here. Alright, we ended up with 49 knowledge points in enchanting, and this is before even using the catch-up mechanic. And the build that we are going for is Nerubian Novelties and Tertiary Trivialties. This is kind of a different build than most people that I've been seeing. They tend to go for a completely different build than this, but this is the build that I'm going with. 
Now at this point we have done everything we need to to start getting the catch up mechanic for knowledge points which in enchanting is called shimmering dust and what you need to do to start getting this is doing your weeklies. So if you haven't done your weeklies yet for example you have to do the weekly quest for enchanting which is 25 skill points and then talk to your trainer for that quest super easy and then you have to do your weekly dis disenchant which we haven't done yet but we're about to do and then you have um you also want to do the two treasures that we grabbed from treasure from dirt for example that i just talked about four minutes ago in this video now once you have the ability to start getting these catch-up mechanics you want to disenchant the dark moon decks but you might not want to buy them like i'm, I'm just going to do this symbiosis we're going to try to buy the Dark Moon Symbiosis deck, and we could buy it right now for 160 gold per, per card on the Ocean House, but it takes time to buy them individually. So what we are going to do here is buy the cards instead, and we can get 101 Shimmering Dust, but we also are missing 5 items, so I, I think we're missing 4, but I'm just going to say 5. Actually, we're missing 4, right? So we can get 3 more of this and then 1 Epic, so I'm going to buy an Enough to make 105 symbiosis cards so we need to buy every single card 105 of them so this one three of symbiosis 105 of that and then we just buy a hundred and five of every single one of them to get the catch-up mechanics now the thing is you might need to buy more or less of this depending on how much you've done in the past and when you're watching this video because the catch-up mechanics goes up every single week i also didn't really pay attention to which card i just bought i'm just going to loot my mailbox here to get the card so we have ace seven and three and we have a hundred and five of all of them now as you can see the symbiosis cards are really cheap and we're getting every single deck here for under a hundred gold or give or take a hundred gold so 100 gold per knowledge point is super cheap and you also get acuity for it as well and we're just going to buy all of the individual cards we're going to make them into the deck and we're going to disenchant the deck that is basically the whole thing that we're doing here now, once you have crafted all of these cards, the next step is going to be to disenchant all these cards. Thankfully, a macro can really help you out there. So, here's the macro that I'm using, and just so you don't have to ask me about that macro. It's literally slash use disenchant, and then slash use the uh, name of the item that you are disenchanting. Now, as you can see, we first of all got our regular weekly, like the fleeting arcane manifestation, and then we got the gleaming telluric crystal, so five knowledge points here, and then four four so nine and from every single disenchant we do after that we get some something called a shimmering dust and because we're disenchanting epics they have a hundred percent drop rate on blues they have more like 30 percent and on greens they feel like they have more like 15 or 10 percent so if you want to be sure that you're getting like if you want to be accurate and you want to get one from every single disenchant the epics are the best ones to go for and once again when you buy individual cards it's one of the the cheapest items as well that you can get knowledge points from so in in most cases you actually get a lot of gold back from refulgent crystals i mean depending on the quality of the crystals you get quality one is kind of meh but quality two would be great but even here we get 26 percent of the gold spent back in the materials we're getting when disenchanting and then we get a lot of knowledge points and the thing is when you use one of these you don't just get knowledge points like if i put this down here right now and start using them you might notice that I'm also getting 5 acuity for every single one and we had 101 of them so we can get 500 acuity that we can then start spending. So after using all of the catch-up mechanic items and also the weekly knowledge point items, we now have 1055 acuity and for knowledge points in enchanting specifically, we now are sitting on 111 unspent knowledge points. Now we have two to spend right here to max out this tree and this is basically the entire build we need. So we have spent 30 points, 20 points and 20 points and after that we are going to spec into supplementary 
into your shattering. We're gonna max this spec out, and then we're also gonna max out both of these because we have enough time knowledge points for that as well. And the thing is, by doing everything we just did, you will never have to care about knowledge points in enchanting ever again. Now, you can use this to learn more recipes, of course. Like, we can, for example, uh, let me just show you. So, we have 19 knowledge points left over, and multicraft does nothing for enchants. So, the only place for me to currently spend knowledge points right now is by learning more recipes. Just to have a backup in case the profitability of this one goes down, we can, for example, learn Cursed Chant and start to have a backup in Cursed Chant. Alternatively, if you want to have a totally different backup, you can start spending knowledge points in Arathor alterations as well. But for this main build, we actually have 19 knowledge points left over, and we have learned everything we need to learn. At this point, you don't need to grind anything ever again. You can just sit there, relax, and print gold. Now, as you can see, we have a bunch of acuity left over, and we don't even have to buy the books for knowledge points in enchanting either, because once again, we have enough knowledge points, we don't really benefit from it. So what you can do now with the 1000 acuity you have, is get yourself one epic profession tool. So for example, this one is important by the way in enchanting, don't go for the blue tool. Enchanters have access to an epic tool instead, so go here and go to current expansion only, go to ruined null stone rod, this one is a little bit expensive to make, but I mean, it's gone down in price a little bit now, the null stones especially. You make this as a personal order, and then you set the minimum quality to quality 5. Now, by default, this will give you 445, and you really want to have ingenuity on this at the moment. Resourcefulness used to be better, but at the moment ingenuity is way better, so you want to have a missive of ingenuity when you're crafting this, and then just pay the crafter a decent fee and get this made for you. That is going to be 400 acuity spent right there. Now in addition to that, you can also get yourself either the crystal or the hat. I would recommend the hat in this case because it both has ingenuity and resourcefulness, so making the hat for example is another 300 acuity. Now we have spent 700 or yes, yeah, 700 out of, out of 1000, so you still have 300 left over. Now, you could technically buy yourself the third tool as well, or the third accessory on blue in enchanting, but the thing is, to make as much profit as possible here, you actually are going to spend some acuity, on a recipe, and the thing is, you. Uh, I'm just going to show you the recipes right now. So if you go to Bracer Enchant, we for example have a Chant of Armored Speed, that is what I'm getting by going to a Sherry Trivialties. So if we take a look at this one, on the Auction House right now, the Chant of Armored Speed. Usually the profit margins here is going to be the difference between quality 2 and quality 3. So let's just say it costs you 1000 gold to make, which is quality 2 right now, and quality 3 is 5.3, which is not that bad. You also have a couple of other recipes, and I made a video on this not that long ago talking about the importance of recipes and spending concentration on recipes, because they will be less made, it's another barrier to entry basically. So let's take a look at, for example, of um, Armored Leech, that right, Chant of Armored Leech. This one, so remember Chant of Armored Speed was 1, it was 5.3 or 5.4, this one is 6. So like, a little bit better at least, on that one alone. And they cost basically the same to make, if you take a look at for example, once again, this one, it's the exact same materials used in both of them, and you just make more profit. So we have both the Armored Leech for example, which is 6000, and it's not even that many until it's 6.5. Yesterday the difference was way bigger than this, but let's take a look at Armored Avoidance for example, might be the same, 6.5. So at the moment, Armored Avoidance would be the best one to go for, 6,500 gold, 1,000 gold more per craft by just buying a recipe for the acuity that you have. Now, as you can see, both of these ones right here are recipes that you have to buy in City of Threads for both 150 acuity and 1,500 cash. So they have a bar barrier to entry to them, which makes them, well, harder to produce. 
So at this point you basically have two options. Option number one is to deck yourself out in full and blue tools, because you do have enough acuity to make both the epic tool and the two rare accessories, because that's going to be 400 plus 600, so 1000, and you have over 1000 already. Now that's going to be option number one, in that case you will craft the regular bracer enchant, the chant of armored speed, and option number two is to only make yourself the hat and also the tool, and then buy a recipe with some of the acuity you have. In this case, next week you can still get yourself the, the last accessory as well on blue quality, if you really want to. Now that's usually, that's gonna make you more gold, and over 1000, mostly 1.5k gold more per craft, it really adds up over time, and especially because when crafting these right here, you don't spend that much acuity. At the moment, I only have 60 skill points, and I haven't even gotten my tools yet. We are spending 254 concentration to get this to quality 3. That being said, if you just level up enchanting a little bit, and you get your tools and accessories, you can get this down to 130 concentration spent. 130. That is not that you can do seven crafts every single time. So if the profit margins is 1.5k difference in the recipes, that is 10,000 gold difference every single time you spend a full concentration bar, which equates to 20,000 gold difference every single week. So for me, it's more worth it to buy this recipe than it is to buy the last accessory. And just in case anyone wondering where you buy those recipes, it's once again at the same guy that you bought the enchanting book for cash at. So right here in the enchanting supplies, you have both formulas right here, and they are 150 acuity and 1.5k cash. Now, in this case, I'm once again going to be transferring cash from my main to my alt, but if you don't have any cash on your alt, once again I have a questing route that gives you about 1200 cash in about 25 minutes, so you can farm cash cash super easily. Now I'm gonna go for the avoidance enchant right here, so we're gonna buy that one, and make a lot more profit for every single craft that we are doing, and we still have 900 acuity left over, enough to get myself one epic tool and one rare accessory, which gives me a really good head start in enchanting. Now at this point, let's talk about profit margins. So we have spent about 22,000 gold setting up this character so far, and I'm just gonna say, you will make that gold back in day one. Once again, we talked about, uh, we looked at the profit margins a little bit earlier, but let's take a look at the exact profit margins here. And um, if you skill up enchanting, you can do seven crafts in one day with 130 concentration. I believe I have a picture example of that over here. This one right here, 138 concentration to get Chant of Armored Leech all the way to quality three by spending concentration. At the moment though, for me it costs a little bit more than that, using quality 2 materials we are spending about 250, 254 concentration, so we can still do about 4 of them, and that is assuming no ingenuity procs, and once again you will make yourself a tool with ingenuity, and you also want to get the ingenuity enchant on that tool as well. So. Since you're going for the best tool, also obviously go for the best enchant, giving you 120 ingenuity. Now let's take a look at the exact profit margins. So if you take a look at armored avoidance once again, I bought the avoidance one, that one goes for 6.4k. And to craft this, it costs me about, let's just say 1.5. I think that's the current price. I mean, Gleaming Shards has gone up in price. Let's just say it costs me 2,000 gold to make this, even though I think it's more like a little bit less than 2,000, but let's say 2,000 gold. In that case, we make 4,455 gold profit every single time. So at the moment, I actually don't make my gold back. I am making 4.4k. I'll be doing 4 crafts, so we get about 17.5k gold back in the first day. So you get 17.5k gold back out of 22,000 gold spent. Now, 
you can once again get this concentration bar down by a lot by just getting more skill points. And once again, before I start crafting this, I will make myself tools and accessories. It's just that my usual profession crafter is not online right now, so I'm waiting for him to come online to make myself a tool and one accessory if he's able to. That way I can get those made because I can currently not make the rod myself, which I should set up a character for to make some rods as well. So at this point there has been a 33 minute deep dive into enchanting, we have set up the entire spec, we're only missing the tools and accessories, which I've given you guys a detailed plan about what to do here as well, so you know exactly what to do from this point moving forward. At this point we have jewel crafting left and I'm not going to be skilling that up in this video, but I'll be showing you the build you want to go for. Now we are starting off by having 48 knowledge points and that is before doing any first time crafts, any crafting orders and you once again want to get yourself some tools and skill of jewel crafting as well as much as you can. That being said I have recently set up a character like this so I can show you an example of build of what to go for. So here is the jewel crafting character that I set up last week with the same strategy that I just talked about. So we have skilled up jewel crafting to about 80 skill points. You can push this further by buying some blasphemite recipes and then just cashing out to get some skill points. Now I have currently not done that even though I guess I can and should at the moment because we basically break even. So these are basically free skill points. So I'm just gonna craft the, I'm gonna craft these as well to get some skill points. But at the moment we have 80 skill points and what I'm doing here and what you should be doing is focus on getting one craft maxed out. Now as you can see I've started making my second craft as well and just because I'm doing my weeklies here for acuity anyway. So I get some leftover knowledge points and I might as well spend them. But I have a maxed out masterful emerald and I'm making masterful emerald with concentration. So masterful emerald we can see right here. We can make that right now with 285 five concentration and the profit margins on this is about it's not really that good but it gives me about 1200 1300 gold profit every single craft which is about 5000 gold for a full concentration cycle that being said when you proc multi craft you get way more sometimes you can get three gems instead of just one which prints gold so for me this is just another one that is super easy because yes alchemy is better but you will have to keep up with it and you will really want to keep up with it as well like even if you still make profit you kind of get that feeling that you want to do your weeklies, you want to do your crafting orders, and you want to do everything you can on a weekly basis to get skill points and knowledge points. For jewel crafting, once you have gotten to the point of maxing out one craft, you don't need to do anything more ever again. Like, I can leave this character right now and just log in and make gold. Nothing I do next week will benefit this craft at all outside of maybe getting blue tools which when you're spending concentration it's kind of limited how much these blue tools are valuable but I mean I'm definitely getting the blue regular tool but how much the last two are worth making it's kind of debatable but the point is the knowledge points doesn't really benefit you past this point so it's super simple to set up might not be the absolute most profitable but it's so easy. So there we go, going for both of the specs that I just showed you for both enchanting and jewel crafting. You can set this up in about one week and be completely done, especially with knowledge points you can be completely done. And with the amount of acuity you get for enchanting, you also get yourself a rare rod or an epic rod and a rare tool at the same time. So you're absolutely printing gold with enchanting, like that build is ridiculous. I recently tried it myself and I'm making about 30,000 to 40,000 thousand gold profit every single week and it goes so fast to set up it is insane and when you start proccing ingenuity on top like the the possibilities are endless here sometimes i, I make up to fifty thousand gold profit from one 
a concentration cycle. So like every three and a half days, you can make up to 50,000 gold profit if you're lucky. So like those ingenuity procs, they're insane at the moment. Either way, that's kind of the video. A very long one today, but I kind of wanted this one to be in depth and show you exactly what to do. And that way you can follow along step by step. And I think I've covered pretty much everything. I mean, there's one more thing that is the add-on I'm using in the top left. It is called Mayus uh, Weekly Knowledge Tracker, I think, or we Mayus Knowledge Points Tracker, and it's a weak aura. So for this one, you want to download weak auras. That is the add-on you want to have, and then just Google Mayus Knowledge Points Tracker, and you will find this one. This one will tell you, for example, in enchanting, how many shimmering dust you have that you can get, and it will also tell you how many catch-up mechanics or catch-up knowledge points you can get from patron crafting orders. It is a really easy to understand add-on and it's really good. Either way, if you enjoyed today's video and this deep dive, then leave a like down below and let me know how much gold, uh, let me know how you are making gold with concentration in the comments down below as well. I would love to hear if you have any different builds than mine and how much gold you're making. And let me know your thoughts on this build as well in the comments. Once again, what I really like is that you can get these made, like on this one I've specced into something else, but the, um, the Nerubian novelties and the tertiary, um, uh, Trivialties and Chants, they only cost about 130 concentration to make, and they still print gold. Like, it is one of the cheapest ones to make, concentration-wise, and it's still printing gold, which is really enjoyable and really fun to see. Either way, that's the video, so thank you for watching, I really do appreciate it, and more than anything, I hope this video was helpful to someone out there and helps you make gold. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video very soon.